Installing the 7543 Peg Head Tuners. For a successful peg head installation, I recommend starting by making a test board with the same kind of wood, the same thickness, the same grain orientation, and a similar hardness to the wood that your peg head is made out of. It's better to have the learning done on a scrap of wood rather than on your peg head. These are great tuners, but ease of installation is not their strong point, and the test board will help you to do a great job. I'm starting by laying out where the tuners will be positioned. I'm locating the holes accurately on the real peg head and somewhat randomly on the test board. You're going to be bored with this test board by the time this video is done. And I will be also. Tool recommendation. One of the tools that I have in my workshop, which I use regularly, is a center finding ruler where the zero is in the middle of the ruler and the markings are mirrored evenly on both sides of zero. I'm not dumb in math, but I make less mistakes by using this tool. What I am going to be doing first, once I have the holes laid out, is to drill small through holes where the tuners will be located. I'll be using about an 80 thousandths bit which will be small enough to provide an accurate guide hole for the bad point bit which will be the next drilling step. Much smaller than an 80 thousandths bit will have too much flex and won't necessarily drill completely straight. So I am going to make these holes through the peg head and through the test board. Now in the next step I use a quarter inch or a six millimeter brad point drill bit. I'm drilling about halfway through the peg head using the small holes I just drilled as a guide. Then I'll flip the board over and drill from the other side. Using this method will keep the wood from tearing out which can be the result when attempting to drill a through hole in just one operation. I don't really need to do it with my test board but I am trying to maintain some level of professionalism here and show good work practices. Now that we have our drilled holes, the real fun begins. The next step that I am going to show is how I use the tapered reamer to make the tapered hole that is needed. The tapered hole wants to be straight and be the correct depth. These pegs are machined very consistently. The threads are tapered and the smallest end thread on them measures about 285 thousandths. Don't take his word for it. Be sure to measure the ones that you have. The tapered hole that is needed wants to be a little bit smaller than this. I'll subtract about 30 thousandths for average density mahogany, less if the wood is softer and maybe only about 15 thousandths on a maple neck. Here is where the test board comes in handy. 30 thousandths from 285 thousandths gives you 255 thousandths. And I will make a mark onto the 30 to 1 tapered reamer at this diameter. This is a standard taper violin peg hole reamer. A red sharpie is my favorite metal marking shop tool. It doesn't readily rub off and it makes a fairly fine line. Alcohol can readily remove the ink. I make a mark at the spot on the reamer where the diameter is about 255 thousandths and another mark the distance of the thickness of the peg head above it. This will be my guideline for setting the depth stop on the drill press. I also made a board with a big hole drilled through it which is a resting bed for the peg head on the drill press. The cross handle is driven out of the reamer, allowing me to jig the reamer into the drill press chuck and I run the chuck at a low speed to keep from wrecking the extensive reamer. I set the depth stop on the press to halt the reamer at my indicated mark. 
I'm using a soft brass brush to keep the flutes of the reamer clean. After reaming one hole into the test board, I'll start installing a peg by hand. The next challenge installing these pegs is to convince the peg to start threading itself straight into the hole. I keep rotating the board a quarter turn back and forth to judge from different viewpoints if the peg is going in straight. Once I can no longer turn the peg with my fingers, I use a set of 7 inch rib joint pliers with a firm, thick leather pad to further wind in the pegs. The aluminum of the pegs is soft and the black anodized finish is extremely thin so take care. So take care of the pliers and also don't brush the pegs with anything harsher than a nylon brush. Note that I am now viewing the peg from the face of the peg head as I am winding it in. It needs to be coaxed into winding its way in straight into the center of the hole. After a couple of complete turns it will stop wandering and settle into driving itself the rest of the way without wiggling around anymore. Continue turning it in with the pliers until it is pretty snug. You don't want to split the peg head or break anything, but it does need to be fully home so it does not loosen up in service. you are not looking at what I was doing, I finished installing three tuners into the test board. Now we'll look at and assess the results. In this hole, the tuner went in too deep. This is your worst result. It looks bad and there's not a lot that you can do to make a big hole smaller. This one is just a thread shy, which is my favorite place for the tuners to end up. This last one, the thread is just at deck level and this is also acceptable. This one that is just a bit shy actually looks good as it sits and once you take out the peg, finish the instrument and refit the peg, it will likely wind in a little bit further and still look good. The one that is too high is unfortunate. So when I am happy with my test board and I have the stop on the drill press set to the correct depth, I will go ahead and ream the four holes on the peg head and install the pegs. These pegs can be successfully installed into most woods, however I would avoid a real soft wood like Spanish cedar or some soft pieces of mahogany. Maple, walnut, koa will all work just fine. I always do my installation on new builds before finishing and after finishing I will chamfer trim the finish with an X-Acto knife before installing the pegs. There is a violin peg box repair method where a grain oriented wooden plug is glued in redrilled and reamed. If you really mess up a hole, this is an option. Find an experienced violin repair person to do this job. This is also an option if you would like to fit a set of these pegs to an existing instrument whose holes are already too big. And that's about all there is to it. See? Ease of installation is not their forte, but these tuners are the best thing since sliced bread for ukuleles. Another note, pay no attention to how difficult these turn in your hands before installing them. And once installed, the turning tension can be adjusted by pulling the button up to make turning easier or by pushing the button down to stiffen the turning tension. They pretty much stay where you set them, but in time they can drift and slip or drift and get hard to turn, then it is easy to adjust accordingly. Thank you for watching this instructional video. I hope I answered most of your questions about installing these tuners. Good luck with your tuner installation and keep the baby. Faith.